morning. It's uh, it's cold. It's really cold. And it's dark. It might seem obvious, but uh, for some reason it's hitting me as a bit of a surprise. Um, here we are in the latter half of October. And uh, it's a very chilly morning. It was three degrees uh, when I pulled up to the spot here this morning. Now I've been here about 25 minutes, just fiddling around in the back of the van setting everything up, making sure I have everything I need. Um, I pretty much have everything and the kitchen sink with me today because I'm not really focused on staying in one swim. Um, I'm on the upper Niagara, so I'm fishing the big water today. And, you know, I really wasn't sure how I was going to approach things today, given that I didn't have any pre-baiting time this week. So leading up to this session, you know, I've been fishing elsewhere. I haven't actually put any bait in anywhere along the upper river today or at all this week. So the plan was, where could I rock up to, put some bait in, and maybe weasel out a couple fish? Well, there's a few swims that can behave in that way, most of which you need, you know, a few hours for that bait to be out there before you're gonna get a, a bite, sometimes even a day or two. But there's a couple of swims, like the one I'm in right now, where sometimes, you know, not always, but more than some of the others, I can show up, put a bit of bait in, and then maybe within an hour or so have a bite. Uh, so that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm starting so early. It's, uh, it's just past 6 a.m. And, you know, I have about an hour before the sunrise uh, comes up right behind me there, just over the other side. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of, I'm traveling with everything, but that's because I can fish out of the van. So, you know, right now I'm using my little tripod with the alarm, I'm very mobile to move around this swim. But, you know, the next swim that I travel to in a couple hours, I might be able to really lock down and get into some fish so I can set up the pod and I can set up the chair and get a little bit more comfortable. But for now, I'm going to start with my, my typical river rig. Uh, lead clip system. I've got a four ounce lead. I've got a slightly longer hook link. German rig to a nice bright pineapple pop-up and then just a PVA stick with my stick mix. You know, pellets and odds and ends, just little bits of the ends of bags and crushed up boilies and pellets and stuff that I just kind of all throw into a bucket and that becomes my stick mix. So it's ever evolving. Hopefully, something will come along. Um, when I got to the swim, I did a quick look with the flashlight just to make sure that I was going to be away from the rocks. There's a lot of rocks just to my side here. And I want to make sure I'm fishing a little bit of a bowl just ahead of them because fishing in those rocks is not good. Um, funny enough, there was a pike sitting there uh, as soon as I showed up, and he did not like the light. He took off like a shot. But that uh, following him helped me find where that last rock was. So now I know I'm in a good spot. I can get my line out there. Hopefully, um, the little bit of bait that I was able to scoop out uh, when I got here, you know, in about a half hour, has brought some some fish in. So I, I'm rambling, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to get a line in and uh, see what happens. in. Hopefully we'll get a bite. All right. It's about quarter after seven. So I've had my line in for about 45 minutes. Uh, maybe 50 minutes. Hasn't even been a full hour yet. 
very little activity on the surface here which is not surprising like I said I only got the bait in as soon as I got here so it's not like I had much pre-baiting opportunities but I want to give this spot a little bit more time now just sitting here quietly listening waiting for the Sun to come up over the horizon there I heard a really big Bosch coming from upriver and when I stood up to watch the area I saw three fish come out problem is that they look to me like they're about 150 to 200 yards upriver there's nowhere to pull off with the van or park um, to gain access to that area that's where there's a lot of private docks just along the, the road um, so no parking areas uh, like I have where I am however about uh, according to Google Maps anyways about 700 yards up river there is the next area that I can pull off and park which also happens to be a creek mouth so it's a it's a lot further up ahead of them um, than I would want to be but it, it, it is ahead of a group of fish now there's there's no reason why there wouldn't be any fish here or just down from me um, you know it might just take some time for them to get on the bait but I'm seeing fish and you know on this river it's hard enough to spot the fish you know you're pretty lucky if you can rock up on a spot and see them rising uh, pretty much you're going into your spots blind just hoping that the pre-baiting tactics worked I don't have that advantage this time so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till 8 o'clock so give me just over a half an hour in this spot if I don't see or hear anything else rising upriver, then I might stay here a little bit longer. But if I continue to see fish rising upriver from me, I may not have a choice but to move. Um, invest a little bit of bait up at that, that creek mouth and see if I can pick off a bite or two up there. It's not the worst thing in the world, having to head up that way. Um, the other two swims that I want to try today are upriver anyways so this would just be adding another swim into the mix but keeping your eyes open your ears open and watching for showing fish on this river can really really pay off uh, once you know where they are if you can get ahead of them you can drop some bait in and they'll follow it right up to your hook bait it's just finding them that's the tricky part to begin with so distance-wise, it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit wishy-washy going that far ahead of them to see if I can pick off a bite, but I'll give it a little bit longer here and see what happens. Well, let's see. How about an update? 8.45. So well past the time frame that I was going to stick around to this spot. Uh, the reason I did is because I stopped seeing the fish showing way upstream and they actually started showing just ahead of my bait um, about 30 yards up from where I am uh, and then a couple even closer so the last rise I saw was probably about 15 minutes ago so one would hope that the fish have found the bait that I put out there and they just need to find my hook bait uh, I have been watching downstream I've seen no signs of fish down there so I'm hoping they've either stopped and are grubbing around in front of me or, or are still maybe just ahead of me but I'm gonna give it a bit more time you know I, I don't have a full day uh, my time frame is limited today and I do have other swims I want to try you know gotta try and maximize the chance for a bite you know even if I only pull out one fish today mission accomplished right just a matter of getting into that spot where I can get that bite and right now with the fish having shown right here on me this seems like the best most logical spot to be so I am going to give it a bit more time and uh, hopefully I can crank one out if I can pull a fish out of here 
uh, I'll be more comfortable moving to another swim and trying things out there because today would have been a success. Uh, sorry, it's still cold, so I've, I've got a bit of a chill. Um, I don't even know if I had a camera running or not, but I actually had a water skier come flying by me about a half an hour ago. Just absolutely insane with how cold it is. You know, the water's not overly cold, but it's cold out. Like, the air is freezing, almost freezing. Um, once the sun came up, it did get better, but I bet you it's can't be any more than five or six degrees at this point so it's still quite cool the freaking water skiers ripping by me so yeah I'm gonna give it a bit more time here so the next update will either be me with a fish or me at another location I'm sure you can see uh, conditions have changed that Sun was getting nice and warm um, despite the little bit of a breeze that there was and then I could see some clouds uh, at the last swim I was in uh, really really dark clouds rolling in but they were staying north of me and then they went from really dark to kind of what what it's like up there now but instead of just being isolated in one area it just went everywhere and now it's raining and I forgot my brolly it was in the van and I must have taken it out after the, after the last session and not put it back in so I do not have my brolly nor do I have a raincoat uh, turns out I also forgot my spod rod which I actually need for this swim because throwing a sloppy mix out with a spoon it doesn't go very far so today is turning out to be kind of crap it's 11 o'clock in the morning I am now on my third swim uh, I did stop at that one spot I mentioned earlier that was about 700 yards up from where I was uh, that creek mouth it looked good it looked really good but yeah nothing happened there I was there for about uh, about 30 minutes um, I left the first swim because there was a water skier then a kayaker then a paddleboarder then the kayaker came back the paddleboarder actually hit my line with his paddle um, didn't they didn't even try to go around my line they just went right over it so I changed swims I moved up to that creek mouth uh, put some bait in got a line in it looked prime it looked like I wouldn't have to wait long to see some signs and then a houseboat came across the river um, parked just uh, just down river from me um, maybe about 30 yards then four cars rolled up and it turned out to be some kind of TV crew or some kind of film crew of some sort they had the you know the big reflectors and tripods and light stands and all oh, the whole works and I was like okay well that's a little frustrating but maybe they'll spook whatever's downstream up to where I am and yeah that didn't happen because the big houseboat that pulled up to where they are uh, turns out that their cameraman hopped on and then they proceeded to move upstream and went right over my baited spot, right over my line. Um, you know, this massive river and everybody seems to be right hugging the shoreline today. I came to this swim and I've had a couple of boats, you know, just drifting with the current, fishing bass, walleye, what have you. Um, you know, no argument with them doing that. But again, they're right up against shore and casting kind of blindly behind them as they drift paying no attention to the fact that there's somebody on the bank and uh, the one guy almost caught my line um, he pulled it right over it if he would have let it sink a little bit he definitely would have had my line so that was frustrating but now that the rain's here pretty much everybody else is going to screw off because I'm the only one stupid enough to stay out in it uh, despite not having the brawly I've just tucked up under a tree here and 
As long as there's no lightning, I should be fine. Now the swim I'm in now, I've fished here several times last fall. Uh, pretty much all the guys that came fishing here, including my son, uh, have caught. I think Demir and I are the only ones who have not caught here yet. Positive note, I've seen one carp rise and I've seen a sucker rise. Uh, the carp was just upstream of me, the sucker was just downstream of me. So I've, I've gone a little bit heavy on the bait, hoping that I can get stuff to start moving around, start feeding. Uh, drifting weed is a bit of a pain in the butt right now, but it's manageable. So I'm a little bit more optimistic now that the rain's come in and pushed everybody else out of the way and the fact that I've seen some fish showing here. I guess all I can do is wait at this point. Basically putting together a whole video of just updates of how much today sucks. It's not really how I was hoping it would go. So we'll, we'll see. I think Kevin's gonna drive down a little bit later and just check in on me, bring me a coffee, because he's nice like that. Um, when he does that, we'll put our brains together. He's not fishing today. Uh, he's recovering from a surgery, so he's just uh, wanting to get out and hopefully see something come out. But if he, if he pops down here for a visit, then him and I, I'm sure, can come up with a game plan. You know, I could always have him watch my gear and I could run home. I'm, I only live 10 minutes up the road. I could grab Brawley and settle in a little bit better. Grab the spot rod for that sloppy mix. I don't know. Feeling a little bit more confident here than I have been all morning. Well, guess what? Another update. Um, it's two o'clock, so I'm rapidly running out of time. The, uh, the weather's gotten better. Uh, there's still some pretty cloudy patches and some rain kind of moving bit by bit, but uh, overall it's cleared right up and it's a lot nicer. The, uh, the last location I was at when it was raining, there were fish rising but not in any one consistent area. They were just kind of everywhere. And I tried a few different hook bait options, a few different rigs, I couldn't get a bite. Uh, the drifting weed is just way too bad down there. So I've moved back downstream to where I started this morning, um, you know, before sunrise. Kind of hoping that the bait that I put in this morning maybe would have gotten some fish moving around now that the uh, kayak and paddle, pedal board or paddle board or you know, other recreational users are maybe not going to go right over my line again. So yeah, this session's been quite a bit of a downer. Uh, you know, it was nice. Kevin did pop by, brought me a coffee. We chatted a little bit. Just one of those things where, you know, like I said at the beginning, um, no pre-baiting on this river really, really makes it tough. Um, these fish are everywhere, they're used to moving around, so as soon as you've got a, a reason for them to stay in one area, you know, they'll stick around a little bit longer and it gives you a good chance to get on them and maybe get a few fish for a day. But just rocking up, you know, putting some bait out and hoping for a bite, it's a tall ask. It can be done, and I've done it, but it's not working out so much today. And I, oh man, I got, I had the camera rolling. 
What a weird bite. Oh, why am I worrying about the camera right now? Oh, it's just going out into the river. Oh, he's turning in the current. Hang, hang on. It's like way out there. If he swings down, he's going to get into those boulders. Hang on, Kevin. Just if this if he comes loose, that's gonna shoot right back at you. So just keep your eyes covered. I literally just put the camera on to film kind of like a, a little bit of the artsy shot of the rod in the sunrise. Same kind of bite where it was just tip tip one beep and then the lead was discharged and it, the line was just slack. He was just there shaking his head. Instead of going up, he went that way. Yeah, same spot. I'm gonna have this out for a bit. I got, I got both fish to take care of. This looks. Yeah, up there. I'll, I'll be out of the way, so I'll be up there. You can. Uh, cast into my spot for time being. Uh, no, I got the first one at quarter to seven. Well, whatever time I message you, uh, 14 mil, pineapple. Size are bigger as the first one. Look at them. Looks like a tank. Look at the head on that thing. Oh, come on. Come on. You can't help, Kev. Yeah, I'm good. I'll just put it in the net for you. You can do all the lifting. Look at this thing. Oh, no, no. Down, down, down! You don't have him. You don't have him. Oh, oh this, this is screwing me up. Oh, he's big, bud. Yeah, I know. Watch out. I just took a wet boot. Yeah, that's what I did earlier. But he's putting so much pressure on this hook point right now. Just lower that. Lower that other way. I gotta pull him up in the current a bit. Oh, I see the wings now. Huh. This is a big fish. Two in a row. 
Tuna roll. Tuna. Oh, look at the mouth. Is that a vacuum? I think it's got a vacuum. I just worried that that hook's going to come loose. Oh, he, like he doesn't want to move. Okay, back up. Just watch that camera. I just, I can't get him to swing up. I'm just trying to get a pull him Dude, over. he's like two feet from the net. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just wait, just wait, don't move. I'm not gonna, he's big. <laughs> Here he comes. Wait, Kev, don't scoop. Just, I'll bring him in so you just have to lift. Yeah. Lift. Yeah. Did you get him in? Yeah, Holy in. crap. Okay, watch that hand. Oh, he's good. He's real good. Oh my god. He's good. I think all of that was in shadow. He's good. Holy crap, yeah. He's, uh... He's 25? He's the same size as the other one. Oh! Yeah. Dirty, rotten. Okay. Uh, uh, this is gonna get nuts. He just get... Oh! Well, uh, I'm very flustered right now. Uh, so, basically, all the footage up into just a few minutes ago uh, is from yesterday. Worked my butt off all day. Could not get a bite to save my life. Um, so I thought, since basically yesterday's sessions were really just pre-baiting in the grand scheme of things, because I couldn't catch, um, I wanted to get back out today and fish on all the bait that I put out there. Uh, and uh, it was worth it. Um, I've now had two fish. Uh, I put one in the sling for the last about 40 minutes, just waiting for good light. And uh, then the plan was to show you. Well, as soon as I got the camera out to just kind of set up a shot to show that I was here the next morning. Yeah, the rod ripped off again. So I'm going to show you the first fish. I just want to get a weight on them. I'm just zeroing the sling. Because the first fish I landed is a really good quality fish. So I just want to get a weight on them and then I'll show you. Things are good. taking so long. Twenty three three. This was the first fish, really unusual bite. And then uh, just an incredible fight in this big river current. How is that? Oh. Hang on, let get a little bit closer here. Uh. 23, three, that an absolute beast of a river fish and this is why we fish the upper Niagara it's for fish like this you know you get your share of small ones but every now and then a special prize like this comes out and luckily the work that I put in yesterday really really paid off for me here Okay, so I'm just going to take a quick breather, the adjustment there. I, just, I need a quick breather right now. Um, so that fish, oh man, I was not expecting it. Um, I sat here. Are you in? So I sat there for about, uh, about an hour, just sipping my coffee, you know, watching the traffic on the other side watch the, some dude over there because that's the 
the US over there. I uh, watched some dude get busted for speeding. A cop, uh, he was just flying along and a cop pulled up. You see the big lights go up, the siren goes up. Busted. So I was in, kind of enjoying the, the serenity, the quiet. Uh, very different weather from today. Yesterday, as I mentioned, it was like three degrees. And then, you know, it, it warmed up through the day, but it rained, like everything was just crap. Um, having baited up this spot so heavy yesterday, I was, uh, I was convinced that there'd be fish here this morning and I have until about 9 a.m. Um, so I'm really low on time. But it's just shy of 8 o'clock. So I got an hour left. And while I was sitting there, it was about uh, just about quarter to seven. And I knew Kevin was going to be coming down to visit this morning. Uh, he was going to be bringing a coffee. Wasn't expecting him to fish. He's definitely not supposed to be fishing right now. Um, having, he's still recovering from his, uh, his surgery, so he shouldn't be out here, but as he puts it, you know, the sickness of fishing really gets to us and, and we do stupid stuff like that. Uh, who's calling me? Okay, sorry Demir, I know I just hung up on you, but I'm doing a bit to camera. I'll call him back in a few minutes. So yeah, quarter to seven, uh, I knew Kevin was on his way. It was dark, I didn't want to get the camera out and deal with the lights and all that stuff. It's windy, but it's 11 degrees when I got here this morning. So right off the bat, conditions up and down, I know it's going to be tricky for a bite. However, because it did warm up through the day yesterday and then stayed stable through the night uh, at that higher temperature, yeah, it's up and down, but that's, you know, probably 15, 16 hours of stable weather. So I felt like I had a good chance and I'm you know it's dark so I'm, I'm kind of just watching the rod tip and the reflection on the water and you get a lot of movement with this current you know I'm using a four ounce lead to hold bottom I'm fishing on a gravel patch over top of a weed bed and there's lots and lots of drifting weed coming down this river so you get a lot of movement in the tip from the current and the drifting weed you know it collects on your line Sometimes it pulls your rig off the spot or just drags it a few inches. So you get some of this bouncing and this indication. And uh, yeah, it was really, really wild because nothing was happening, just this consistent bobbing of the tip. Then I had one beep, just one sudden beep. So I looked over and it was just doing that bobbing. So I was like, oh, okay, collecting weeds again. And then all of a sudden, because you're fishing current, because you've got some weight on your line from this weed that's causing this movement, there's a bend to your rod tip. Well, all of a sudden, boom, went straight. The bend to the rod tip was gone. So that could only mean I've discharged my lead. So thinking, okay, well, if the lead's discharged, then I have to bring it in, put a new one on, recast. So I grabbed the rod off the tripod there, and I was just holding it and noticed that the line wasn't going downstream with the current. If I dropped the lead, my pop-up should come up, my line should swing down. It didn't do that. And at, you know, in that few seconds while I hold that up and realize that, all of a sudden, boom, boom. So a quick little strike, you know, nothing too hard, and immediately 80 yards of line peeled off and that fish went straight upstream. Um, right up river. You know, no more than five, probably four or five rod lengths out from the bank, but right up against this heavy current. We always say that if the fish goes straight out or left, it's of the smaller size. If you get a fish that goes up current, you're looking at 20 pounds plus. It's just kind of the rule that we've had um, since we've been kind of really paying attention to how these fish move up here. Now there are exceptions. Sometimes you hook a big guy and he just goes sideways and drifts downstream. And yeah, those ones you don't usually land. So we can say that they're smaller ones because we have no idea, but this one, went about 80 yards upstream and just as I was starting to gain, get a chance to kind of stop it because I kept tightening the drag and it was still taking line this fish just kited right out to the middle straight across the current right out in the middle and started to coming downstream so it gave me an opportunity to catch up all that line what I didn't realize is how fast I caught up that line you know this fish just he must have been swimming with the current rather than just taking a rest and, and uh, drifting down but by the time I caught up the line and was able to get the weight of the rod to feel the whole fish again, uh, he was about a rod length out from me, just to my left, just shy of all these big boulders in the water. 
and I at that point was able to turn off my headlamp or turn it on got it on the fish saw it and yelled out some profanities of excitement and quickly scooped the net under it 23 pounds three ounces so excited to get that fish and yeah I was able to put him in the retention sling to wait for better light I knew Kevin would have been here and I think it took him about 10 minutes after that and he arrived but uh, I really wasn't expecting anything else to happen so with the fish in the sling Kevin showed up having coffee exchanging our good mornings uh, he's going to set up against doctor's instructions but he's doing it anyways and yeah I just I thought okay well I'll take a break I'm going to get the uh, camera out of the van I'm going to film a bit of the sunrise to help indicate that you know it's a new day and, and what's going on and why I'm here now and sure enough very briefly in what two minutes in of putting the camera on that sunrise with the rod and same kind of bite you should see it I, I haven't looked back on it so I don't know but I'm, I'm assuming you saw it already um, the boom 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 uh, on the tip and then you could see the rod just come up because the lead discharged and that fish again upstream kind of a cross current just out into the middle um, that fish is a lot bigger I think it's 30 uh, Kevin thinks it's close the head on it the mouth on it you in well is your rod bent is your rod bent so you're not into a fish you just had a bump you're not into a fish yet but you think you had a whack so right now because I'm doing this bit to camera Kevin's actually got his rod on my pod uh, to take my spot which is fine. I really don't need to fish the rest of the morning. I'm happy. <laughs> um, but we still got some activity in the swim. Uh, when I showed up, I was out of maize. I had four scoops of maize left to put out, and then I put out about a, about a kilo and a half of 20 mil crab boilies uh, that I had with me. That's all the bait that I've been able to put out today because I didn't bring any more. Uh, it's just what's left over from yesterday. Um, clearly, that's brought the biggins in. So if Kevin's getting some activity, we may see another fish. But for now, um, I'm going to go get the big guy. He's in the sling right now. Uh, just letting him recover after that battle. Because that was a hard fight. And the whole time I thought that hook was going to come out. Every time I got his nose up, saw that massive mouth, I thought the hook was coming out. Uh, it didn't. We're lucky. As soon as I got him on the mat and out of the net, uh, I went to unhook him. And it was just laying gently inside his mouth. So he was hooked long and well enough with the pressure to get him in. But as soon as he got in the net, that hook wasn't holding anything. So I'm going to go grab my coffee and get the horseshoes out of my butt. And then I'm going to bring that fish up for you to see. Whoa, 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 whoa. <sighs> All right. I've got fish number two up here. Uh, kind of got lucky too because uh, just as I went down to go grab them, the cord that holds my retention sling to the bank uh, snapped in my hand. So we're gonna have to replace that cord. It's an old sling. This is like a 15 year old sling. So I'm not really surprised. Oh my God. It looks big. I gotta get uh, I gotta get the sling out. Can you lift that big sling out, please? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, hang on. I need the other one. What do you, you need? You took, you took the other one. Yeah, buddy. So this fish is definitely bigger than 23.3. Uh, just gonna zero the sling real quick. I hate having to move this fast because then it feels so rushed. But I gotta think of the fish, right? Why is this not going on? I got one. This worked just fine for the other fish. Want me to get mine? Yeah, for some reason it's not uh, turning on.
It must have gotten wet in the back. Hang on, hang on. I got it. Hang on. Okay. Let's do this quickly. Oh, she's 30. Oh, it's got to be 30. Yeah. yeah. Look at the mouse. <laughs> I, I, I got I got Demir on the phone. I told him it. The only thing I can describe that as is if you take a, a large Tim Hortons coffee cup, yeah, that's the top. Inside that, you can, it can eat a pop can, no problem. That's yeah. a big mouth. Oh yeah, you can put a pop can in that 100%. That's, that's a big mouth. Okay. Wow. How's, his, how's his fins? Is he alright? He looks good. Yeah, yeah. He's upside down, but he, he's okay. If he's upside down, he'll stay a little bit calmer. Alright. <sighs> Sneak preview. Yep. <laughs> oh minus, my. Minus the net? No, it's zero. Minus the sling? No, I zero it. Oh. So when you put the sling on it, in the it, sling, the sling's already zeroed. Oh wow, okay. So that's the actual weight. You don't Excellent. have to subtract anything. Excellent. <sighs> you broke 30. So, with the exception of my 40 in 2018, I have not actually had a 30 pounder since 2017. I have today. Let me get this behemoth That's up. That's awesome. I'm gonna get my phone. Awesome. 31 pounds, one ounce. Absolute massive beast of a fish. You know, I said with the last one, that's the reason we fish the upper Niagara for big, big fish like that 23 pounder. Um, this is bigger. And this is something that's just absolutely magical. I'm so excited. Ugh. It's been a long time since I've had a fish this big. You forget what it's like to hold them. Fins are just massive. Well, that's that session done. Um, it's just about quarter after nine. I have to get out of here. I'm blown away. I've still got shakes um, of how amazing that went, but. You know, being so down after fishing all day yesterday in constantly changing conditions, um, this really proves the point. And I, I know I've said it over and over again, but when you're fishing a river, pre-baiting makes such a huge difference. You know, if I would have baited up, you know, for even just little bits of bait, but for two days leading up to yesterday's session, I would have caught, almost guaranteed. You know, I know the spots to fish, um, you know, and fish are all along the river, but I know the spots that I, I have the best chances. Um, it's just, you know, yesterday, I, through the week, I didn't have the chance to pre-bait. Yesterday, I was sure that I could get a bite from one of the swims I was in. Everything went wrong. The water skier, the kayaker, the paddle boarder. Um, you know, I went to another swim, there's a TV crew. You know, I get down to the next swim and there's guys trolling and drifting and casting over my line. Like everything was stacked up against me yesterday. And it took a toll on my mental health for sure. Um, but being confident that what I, the, the bait that I put in yesterday would still get me some fish, had to take advantage of the few hours I had this morning and wow, absolutely wow. You know, I'm so lucky that Kevin was able to come by and, and see those fish and, and help me out with pictures and such. So, for now, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to head home, spend some time with the little guy, plan out my next session. Um, hopefully, I can get out next weekend. I'm not sure yet. But, yeah, it's we're rapidly approaching November. And, you know, it's not going to be long before these carp really turn off for a few months. So I might have to switch gears for some, some trout or something like that, but 
yeah I'm so pleased so so pleased about how this went um, I can't help but just ramble I'm either at a complete loss for words or I can't shut up so I'm going to make the choice to shut up now thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe hit the like button um, also hit that bell icon so you always know when new videos come out until next time take care